Hey guys, it's Jason from the IT Folk here and today I'm going to show you how to back up your precious files, family photos, videos or anything like really. Uh, I'm going to be using a program that's already built into Windows. It's free, it's easy, it's fast, it's reliable and I'm going to show you how to set it so it runs automatically every day. I know there's companies out there that try to sell backup software but really there's no need for them. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because nothing breaks our hearts more at the IT folk when customers uh, bring in their laptops or desktops with failed hard drives and tell us that their entire family photo collection is on there uh, and they've not backed them up. Uh, some people even brought, you know, they've gone out and bought external hard drives but have forgotten to copy their files over regularly because it's not automatic and human nature dictates that if it's not automatic you're going to forget. So let's get started. On my desktop here I've got a source folder and a destination folder. Now my source folder is, let's pretend it's my entire family photo collection. It's on my C drive, on, in my pictures, wherever. My destination, we're going to pretend that that is on, you've, I've created this folder uh, on my external hard drive. I've gone out and bought a new her external hard drive and I've created this folder on the hard drive. Um, the program we're going to be using is a program called Robocop, uh, Robocopy, I was going to say Robocop, uh, Robocopy. Um, as I said, it's built into Windows, um, but we do need to use a little script to tell it what to copy and that script is going to be available in the descriptions for you to download. There is a tiny little bit of editing that you'll need to do just to tell it your source and destination. But apart from that, it's uh, it's very, very straightforward. So this is the batch file here that you'll basically download. I've called it TC Backup Demo. And you can call it whatever you like. And what I suggest you do once you've downloaded it is to put it somewhere safe, like your uh, the root of your C drive. Just create a folder. I've got a folder here called batch and these are all my batch files that I use for backing up my various bits and bobs um, so let's pretend that I have moved this and it's now in that place um, so once you've got it in, in your, your your safe place just right click on it and go into edit because this is where you're going to edit I know this looks scary because there's loads of stuff in here don't worry about it you don't need to worry about any of this stuff here a lot of this stuff you don't actually need in there but just keep it in because it may be that you'll copy you know you maybe have some log files in there or something that you just don't want to you don't want to copy or that, that Windows has trouble copying and it'll just end up in an error so, so leave all of that sort of stuff in there so my source as we can see has got um, some photos in it that I put in there just for the demonstration and my destination has got absolutely nothing in it at all um, what I want to do is I want to copy these folders here these files here into here now obviously manually you can just drag them in um, but if you've got thousands of photos and stuff then that's not gonna that's not gonna do and obviously if it's as I said if it's not automatic then you'll forget to do it your hard drive will die somewhere down the line and you'll lose your stuff this is going to prevent that um, okay so what we need to do is we need to tell the script this is just a simple batch script um, we're going to tell the script where to copy from and where to copy to. So the first bit of light, the first bit of code here, is the actual desk, the path, the full path of the the source folder. Now the easiest way to find that path f f for for the purpose of the script is just to double click on your folder so that it's open like this, and then just click left click on the uh, address bar and copy the full. Uh, path. Now when you come to paste it you won't have these uh, quotation marks but you do need them so when you paste it in here just put the quotation marks back in and that just stops any errors because Windows doesn't like spaces uh, whereas if you put the qu quotation marks in it will read the whole thing. If you don't put the quotation marks in when it comes to um, do the destination it will just read that and then it'll, the, 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 the code will break, the, the program won't run. So that's our source and our destination which is going to be on our external hard drive exactly the same just left click copy the, the path now yours will obviously be like G or whatever your external is and then we're just going to paste that back in there and we're going to put the quotation marks in there as well and that's it so you want to click file and then save and that's really all you need to do with this uh, you can close it down I'm going to leave it open just now because there is another there's a switch that you can add that I'll tell you about. So now that that's done, it's gonna it it's gonna copy everything from here into here, and we'll show you that now by just executing the program. And there you go. Now this will pop up 
and it will actually show you what's been copied. If you've got thousands of files, the first time you do this, this might run for 10 minutes, it might run for an hour, it depends on how much stuff you've got. If you've got a lot of um, high definition, large video files in there, then it will take a while. So um, it's always a good idea to maybe do it when you're not going to be using your computer. But the great thing about Robocopy is the first time it does it, it will copy everything. The second time it runs and then subsequently after that it will only copy over any new files you've added. So I'll demonstrate that now. I'm going to just create a new file here. So that's that one there. And then when I run the program again, so it's showing me that it copied over 21 files and 21 files were copied. Uh, and if I run it again, it's shown me that it's only copied the one file and that's that file there. So that means that every time it runs from there on in it will only copy your new file so it's not going to take ages to, to do. Um, so we just want to close that down there. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you accidentally delete a file or a folder, well, let's just put a new folder in here. Say we've got a folder and uh, your kids have accidentally gone in and delete. Oh hang on, let's just run the script first to copy that folder over. So there's that f new folder in there now. Um, your kids accidentally, I was going to say wife, but that'd probably get me in trouble. Um, so we accidentally delete that folder and you think, oh my god, we've lost all these photos. Well, you know, the good thing is the, the backup will have that folder and even when the script runs, it's not going to delete that, that folder. That will always be, be there, even if you're adding new stuff. Copy here, run that. Let's go copy the new folders over and your other folder is there to be retrieved back. You can just copy it back. Oh, oh you want to not move it like I've just done there. You want to copy it back. And that way everything's nice and safe. Now, I mentioned that it was automatic. Well, it's not automatic at this stage. We're going to have to make it automatic. You can, if you want, just create a shortcut to the script on your desktop and manually click it every now and again if you want to just do it that way. But as I've said, human nature, you'll forget. So what we want to do is we want to make this automatic and the, the easy way to do that is just to create a basic task a task schedule uh, using again using Windows. So Windows 7, so just click on the start button in the search field, type in task. The first two will normally be your task schedule. So it's task schedule you want. If it doesn't come up, just type in the full thing, task schedule error. And it will come up. So open up the task scheduler. When you start for the f if you f load into the task scheduler for the first time, you're sometimes on this tab. Just click on the next one if you're not on it, and that will show you that there's already a whole host of tasks that have been set up. Some of them are system created by Windows, others are like Google and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about them. What we're going to do is we're going to create a basic task. So click on basic task. Uh, the action, sorry, the, the name, you call it anything you want. I'm just going to call it daily backup. You can put a description in there that tells you what it is. Click on next. Trigger, well you want it to happen every day, so make sure daily is checked. Click next. Uh, recurring every one day, so you want it to, to happen every day again. And the time, well that's really up to yourself. You, you can set it any time. Set it to a time where you know your computer is going to be on. Um, I tend to set it to like 3 in the morning because my computer's on all the time. I never switch it off. Um, but you might want to switch it to a time that, that you absolutely know your computer is going to be on. Um, or just leave your computer on or, or you know, set it to 3 in the morning and just remember to leave your computer on um, a couple of times a week. But I would recommend you set it to time where you're guaranteed to know that that computer is on so that you're not going to miss a, a backup. So it's now 22.06. I'm going to set that to 22.08. And we'll see it. We'll actually see it running. And then let's put that to 0, zero And then click Next. And what you want it to do, the action is to start a program. Now, the program is that simple batch file that you've downloaded. So we're going to browse to that. You'll have saved it to your C drive probably. For the purpose of this demonstration, it's still on my desktop. And it's the batch file there. And you also have to put in the start in. You have to put the path to where you want to start. Now, all you need to do there is just copy without the quotations. Don't include the quotations here. Copy the actual... Um, first part, the actual path of the folder that it's in. So copy it up until the point where the program name is, is excluded. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste in. 
and that's it so click next and then click finish so it's 22.07 and at 22.08 this is going to show so it shows up in your task scheduler now you can test it by just clicking right clicking and run but I'm going to wait until uh, till it actually runs itself so let's minimize this just now and that is pretty much it there is uh, another um, switch in here that I've just I added for the demonstration it's called mirror um, whether you choose to add that or not is entirely up to yourself I personally um, I personally would remove or not add that in your version that mirror will not be there what that basically means is it will mirror um, everything in your source folder so if you unlike in the other uh, the other, other demonstration where you delete and accidentally delete a folder there you go there's the the, the scheduled task um, unlike the the previous demo where I accidentally deleted the folder and it didn't delete it and here with the mirror command uh, what it'll do is it will it will actually mirror everything that's that's on on here so if I save that and just demonstrate what I'm talking about so it's actually deleted all the files so it's basically saying delete any files that are here that aren't in here and that's really handy if you want to uh, manage your capacity. You don't want your um, destination folder size growing beyond the size of your source file. But I would keep it out and just make sure that you've got plenty of space on your external hard drive. So we'll, we'll delete that. And that is pretty much it. One other thing, if you want to... So when this runs, you'll notice that this black uh, command uh, window pops up and it stays there until you hit a key. If you don't want that, it's quite handy to have because at least you know that it's running. You could just delete the pause and that will just you know flash up and it will flash off again. You don't have to do anything. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you'll use this. It will save you a lot of heartache and money as well because it's free. Um, if you have any questions or problems, give me a shout in the description. Um, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.